welcome back to Chicken Soup for the Soul. For all those people feeling isolated and missing loved ones that just want something to bring them a smile, this is for you. I'm reading stories, I'm missing loved ones and sometimes it's just them small things that you out there are doing really helps my day. So hopefully this will help someone today. This is a story that I found today and it made me cry. So uh, <laughs> hopefully I won't cry too much now, but, <laughs> but I thought it was really beautiful. Um, it's called All the Good Things and it's written by Helen P. Rosler. Chicken Soup for the Soul. Are you sitting comfortably? Good, so now I'll begin. He was in the third grade class I taught at St. Mary's School in Morris, Minnesota. All 33 of my students were dear to me, but Mark Eckland was one in a million. Very neat in appearance, he had that happy-to-be-alive attitude that made even his occasional mischievousness delightful. Mark also talked incessantly. I tried to remind him again and again that talking without permission was not acceptable. What impressed me so much, though, was the sincere response every time I had to correct him for his misbehaving. Thank you for correcting me, sister. I didn't know what to make of it the first time, but before long I came, became accustomed to hearing it many times a day. One morning my patience was growing thin. When Mark talked once too often, I made a novice teacher's mistake. I looked at Mark and said, If you say one more word, I'm going to tape your mouth shut. It wasn't ten seconds later when Chuck blurted out, Mark is talking again! I hadn't asked any of the students to help me watch Mark, but since I had stated the punishment in front of the class, I had to act it out. I remembered the, see I remember the scene as if it had occurred this morning. I walked up to my desk, very deliberately opened the drawer, and took out a roll of masking tape. Without saying a word, I proceeded to Mark's desk, tore off two pieces of tape and made a big X with them over his mouth. Then I returned to the front of the room. As I glanced at Mark to see how he was doing, he winked at me. <laughs> that did it. I started laughing. The entire class cheered as I walked back to Mark's desk, removed the tape and, shrugging my sh and shrug shrugged my shoulders. His first words were, Thanks for correcting me, sister. At the end of the year, I was asked to teach junior high maths. The years flew by and before I knew it, Mark was in my classroom again. He was more handsome than ever and just as polite, since he had to listen carefully to my instruction in the new maths. He did not talk as much as in ninth, in my, in ninth grade. One Friday, things just didn't feel right. We had worked hard on a new concept all week, and I sensed that the situation, that the students were growing frustrated with themselves and edgy with one another. I had to stop the crankiness before it got out of hand. So I asked them to list the names of the other students in the room on two sheets of paper, leaving a space between each name. Then I told them to think of the nicest thing they could say about each of their classmates and write it down. It took the remainder of the class period to finish the assignment but as the students left the room, each one handed me their paper. Chuck smiled. Mark said, Thank you for teaching me, sister. Have a good weekend. That Saturday, I wrote down the names of each student on a separate sheet of paper and listed what everyone else had said about that individual. On Monday, I gave each student his or her list. 
Some of them ran two pages long. Before long, the entire class was smiling. Really? I heard whispered. I never knew that meant anything to anyone. I didn't know others liked me so much. No one ever mentioned those papers in class again. I never knew if they discussed them after class or with their parents, but it didn't matter. The exercise had accomplished its purpose. The students were happy with themselves and one another again. That group of students moved on. Several years later, after I had returned from a vacation, my parents met me at the airport. As we were driving home, Mother asked the usual questions about the trip, how's the weather, my experiences in general. There was a slight lull in the conversation. Mum gave Dad a sideways glance and simply asked, Dad, simply said, Dad? My father cleared his throat. The Ucklands called last night, he began. Really, I said. I haven't heard from them for several years. I wonder how Mark is. Dad uh, responded quietly. Mark was killed in Vietnam, he said. The funeral is tomorrow, and his parents would like it if you could attend. To this day, I can still point to the exact spot on the I-494 where Dad told me about Mark. I had never seen a serviceman in a military coffin before. Mark looked so handsome, so mature. All I could think about, think at that moment was, Mark, I would give all the masking tape in the world if only you would talk to me. The church was packed with Mark's friends. Chuck's sisters rang the battle hymn of the Republic. Why did it have to rain on the day of the funeral? It was difficult enough as the grave, at the graveside. <coughs> the pastor said the usual prayers and the bugler played taps. One by one, those who loved Mark took a last walk by the coffin and sprinkled it with holy water. I was the last one to bless the coffin. As I stood there, one of the soldiers who had acted as the pale bearer came up to me. Were you Mark's maths teacher? He asked. I nodded as I continued to stare at the coffin. Mark talked about you a lot, he said. After the funeral, most of Mark's former classmates headed to Chuck's farmhouse for lunch. Mark's mother and father were there, obviously waiting for me. We want to show you something, his father said, taking a wallet out of his pocket. They found this on Mark when he was killed. We thought you might recognise it. Opening the billfold, he carefully removed two worn pieces of notebook paper that had obviously been taped, folded and refolded many times. I knew without looking that the papers were the one in which I had listed all the good things each of Mark's classmates had said about him. Thank you so much for doing that, Mark's mother said. As you can see, Mark treasured it. Mark's classmates started to gather around us. Chuck smiled sheepishly and said, I still have my list. It's in the top drawer of my desk at home. John's wife said, John asked me to put in our wedding album. I have mine too, Marilyn said. It's in my diary. Then Vicky, another classmate, reached into her pocketbook, took out her wallet and showed her worn and frazzled list to the group. I carry this with me at all times, Vicky said with, without batting an eyelash. I think we all saved our lists. That's when I finally sat down and cried. I cried for Mark and all his friends who would never see him again. See you for her. Really touched me because it's amazing. It was so simple, such a simple thing that she did, and yet it touched all of their lives. And it's a good reminder that these simple things, they make a big difference, and it is really worthwhile 
taken the time to do these simple acts of kindness, these simple acts of bringing people together and increasing happiness. This is definitely a time when we need to do this more than ever. So um, remember the power of kindness and doing things that bring happiness because the results of them can last for so many years, lifetimes. <laughs> Take care. That's love. Bye for now.